Most important thing is we don't block. Because if you put up a block here, I cut you. If you put up a block there, you cut all your hands. If you put all our block there, then you get hit. So what we have is what they call the deflection process. The hand operates fast. Most uh, martial arts, uh, they are at least oriented on how to block any attacks. Meaning to say, you have to establish the block in order that you could counterattack. In Kali, we don't have that blocks and we don't advocate blocks. We only let the student understand that there is an offense and counter offense. So your counter offense becomes your defense. So when you talk of self defense technique, you are not talking of an individual who does not know anything. If a guy in the street who knows something, and you know, they have an opportunity to buy the video, to buy, uh, to go and see the movies, and, and they understand too. Especially uh, criminals, they also learn things. Because they saw that, you know, this guy is going to block the knife, so he will get a knife and try to hit you, and then when you block, he cuts you. But if you don't have this orientation of counter-offense, then you'll be loser, because the fellow on the other side is trained too. So these are the things that has to be understood properly by any martial artist. That the people that are going to uh, encounter by their students or by themselves are also trained. You should not train somebody and say, the guy in the street that you're going to fight is the guy that does not know anything. Always anticipate that this person know something and your technique must be higher than this individual. In other words, your technique must sophisticate it in, that, in, in, in a way that you don't get caught. So in our principle, we don't advocate the blocks because block is stagnation, stoppage. So when you work with a knife-to-knife -knife principle, then you learn that there is no stoppage. It must only go with the flow. Lots of deflections, lots of body mechanics, lots of uh, uh, familiarization as far as the real blade is concerned. So when I train, I train the individual with a live blade, you know, then for him to respond by, uh, by carrying on the reflex method, methodology. And the reflex is developed while he will be on training on the real blade. So if it is a black oriented thing, it's very hard because why? Once you get the flow, then he may get cut. So we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to remove the bad habits. So going back into the question, the most important thing for a person or a martial artist to uh, work with his people or other people in terms of self-defense is that, first of all, they should inject to their students or to their uh, people that the self-defense that they are teaching must work for a person who understands, not for a person who does not understand. Uh, we have a program that is ongoing now with the different uh, police organizations. Uh, for example, I am one of the uh, certified instructors of the Justice System Training Association. I am also with the United States Police Defensive Tactics Training Association as a national training director. And uh, with the program that we have, which is the safety baton tactical training, it provides three things. The safety baton uh, concepts is to save the department from legal liabilities, to save the officer's life, and to save the assailant's life. Why? Because our system directs the training or the specific area of target, which is the hand. We only hit the hand. We can control the individual or the culprits or the subject by only uh, tapping his hand. Uh, we don't immediately go to the head or to the collarbone or to the solar plexus or to the, uh, to the knees or to other parts of the body. It is just directed to the hand. Whether the individual is going to make a false move or he will just be pretending that he's going to use his hand to hit the police officer or he may pretend or he may use actually his hand by pulling a knife in his, uh, from his pocket or pulling a hidden gun on his uh, side, then immediately the police officers can immediately release the baton by hitting only into the hand.
So that's why we have this, uh, what do you call this, collapsible baton. So in the absence of the uh, straight baton, the collapsible baton will be uh, sufficient enough to uh, uh, control the uh, subject. So under this concept, which is the art of Kali, uh, or incorporated into defensive tactics, it helps a lot and it enhances a lot as far as the new concept of uh, using the baton for uh, law enforcement training. So the way I understand it though is now in Kali, it's the speed, your ability to evade and, uh, and uh, counterattack to the extremities is your basic concept, is that correct? Yes, uh, the basic principles actually in Kali is we have three things. First, speed, timing, and power. That's the top uh, goal for any beginners or practitioner. How to obtain the speed, how to obtain uh, timing, and how to gain power. All right. When you want to reach these three uh, goals, first you must have coordination. How you get your coordination depends on how train you. You have to get that uh, uh, agility. When you get that agility, then you develop the flexibility. So all of these, these three will correspond to the three things, speed, timing, and power. The secret in Kali is how you are trained, and the technique is how to give the technique in training. Because anybody could have a technique, but if he doesn't know how to train the person to use the technique, then uh, it doesn't mean anything. Because anybody could hold a stick and start swinging it. Anybody could kick and just kicking, you know, and what is the secret behind, you know, the technique. So, everybody says, oh, well, you know, I cannot teach you more than that because, you know, we have a secret. The truth of the whole matter is the secret is how you teach this, the technique. Yes, I've, I've heard One the technique, two techniques, that's all. But how you teach this to be more effective, that's the key.